Each day, firefighters put themselves at risk to battle blazes and save lives. But with changes in the way homes are built and the materials inside, fire departments are dealing with dangerous new challenges in fighting modern fires. In tonight's edition of Scientific Chicago, Arsha Qureshi takes us inside a groundbreaking research project aimed at improving firefighting tactics and reducing injuries and fatalities. Inside this testing facility at Underwriters Laboratories in Northbrook, researchers are preparing to set this 3,200 square foot building on fire. The structure mimics the layout and furnishings inside a modern home with an open floor plan. The modern homes are bigger, first of all, and secondly, there is much more synthetic material in the homes than there was, say, 20 or 30 years ago. Synthetic materials burn hotter and faster, so the fire spread is completely different than it was back then. Researchers say fires today seem to burn faster and kill quicker because synthetics release more toxic gases when burned. According to the National Institute of Standards and Technology, in 1970, residents had about 17 minutes to evacuate a home safely after a fire was started. Today, that window of opportunity has been reduced to about three minutes, due in part to petroleum-based home products like furnishings and open floor plans. When I came on the job over 30 years ago, they said to us, fires today are different because of plastics. And it's as true today as it was 30 years ago. There's more plastic. Peter Van Dorp is a district chief of the Chicago Fire Department and is currently in charge of firefighter training. We're making these buildings tighter. We're making them airtight to conserve energy. And then, on top of that, we take all the redundancy out of the building itself. So the structural components of the building are lighter weight than ever before. This is a recipe for disaster from a fire standpoint. Right? So we need to understand all these things coming together and how that's impacting the firefight and what we need to do different. The research funded by FEMA and the Department of Homeland Security aims to do just that. Working with fire departments from across the country, UL has been designing the experiments in conjunction with fire officials to answer the most pressing questions. Each of these little junctions is a thermocouple and it measures the temperature so we want to see how hot it is on the floor versus how hot it is all the way up to the top. Using sophisticated computers, temperature gauges and smoke density detectors, UL will examine the impact of different firefighting and ventilation techniques on temperature, smoke and fire density. Five, four, three, two, one, ignition. Cameras record what's happening on the inside of the home, as well as critical ventilation points from the front door to the rooftop. Over the course of two months, you all will conduct 17 controlled burns just like this one, where they'll collect thousands and thousands of data points that will help them with research that will determine how to fight fires better and safer. The research is already pushing fire officials to re-examine old lessons. One of those most important lessons is water first, always, and last. Getting water on the fire is the most critically important thing. This current series of experiments is testing different ventilation scenarios. Up on the rooftop, researchers simulate what happens when firefighters ventilate the building, which is done in the real world by cutting a hole in the roof. We just have a trapdoor here. At the right time, when the researchers believe they want the data, they will open these trapdoors, simulating firefighters actually cutting a hole in the roof, and see how that affects the ventilation. Historically, firefighters always thought that when they broke out windows or cut out roofing to ventilate a building, that immediately cooled the air. But Van Dorp says the research indicates that's not the case. But what these experiments are helping us realize is that the first thing that you do when you ventilate the building is you cause temperatures to go up because there's so much fuel in the building now and that building is oxygen starved and when we open up we're giving it the oxygen it needs so the temperatures are going to spike and if we're not prepared right now to put water on the fire we're going to lose control of this incident. Fire officials say the key to discovering practical applications to the research that's being conducted here is making the science accessible to firefighters and their departments. We literally have a seat at the table. The fire service, firefighters, are at the table helping to design these experiments. They're asking the questions that need to be asked so that the research is giving us the answers we need. It's not theoretical or hypothetical anymore. It's very, very real. The ultimate goal, they say, is to bring the science of the laboratory into the real world, where the street firefighter can use it to save lives.
For Chicago Tonight, I'm Usher Qureshi. And once the experimentation is complete and the data is compiled, underwriters' laboratories will send the results to the Department of Homeland Security to publish the final research. If you'd like to read more about the UL research and see a gallery of photos, check out our website, wttw.com slash Chicago Tonight. And back with a look at today's Oscar nomination, so stay right here.